Well, welcome back to some Algebra 2 review. We're going to sum up our final review on trigonometry with the unit circle. So what are some trig values that I should know, or you should know? Well, of course, that's 30, 60, 45 are our three main degrees. Now, you really need to be able to stick those into radians pretty quickly, and hopefully you're comfortable with this. Um, remember, to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by what you want. So if I want an answer in radians, I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. If I want an answer in degrees, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. So remember, what you want goes on top. Okay, so you're making your own notes off to the side. This is your review. Um, so you should be able to quickly convert 30 degrees into radians. And I'm hoping you don't have to use this formula and you just know that off the top of your head by now. If you do, obviously you're taking 30 times pi over 180. Um, but we really truly hope by now you know that 30 degrees is really pi over 6. We hope you understand by now that 60 degrees is pi over 3. We're, we're hoping we've done that enough times. And 45 is pi over 4. And those are our key angles that we're looking for. Now to evaluate those, again, we should have these memorized. Uh, we should know that the sine of 30 is 1 half, uh, which is the same as the cosine of 60. We should know that the sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2, which is the same as the cosine of 30. We should know both the sine and cosine of 45 are radical 2 over 2. And then tangents, we should say the tangent of 30 has all the 3's, so that's radical 3 over 3. Tangent of 60 is just radical 3, and the tangent of 45 is 1. Some other things that we should have memorized by now, we should know that tangent theta is equivalent to sine theta over cosine theta. And that's one quick way to think about this one. If I said the sine of 45 divided by the cosine of 45, well, anybody divided by itself should be 1. Okay, so let's get into labeling some things on the unit circle. Remember, when we say unit, we're talking about a radius equal to 1. So basically, this point should be 1 away, this point should be 1 away, 1 away, 1 away from the origin. So we can go ahead and label these points. We should know that's 1, 0. This, of course, is 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Okay, secondly, probably one of the most important things is we should know that anybody that lies on the unit circle in trig is no longer called x, y, but we put it in terms of trigonometry. We say that's equivalent to, just like x comes before y alphabetically, we call this cosine theta, sine theta. Now, we have to be smart about what quadrant we're sitting in. Remember the, the little saying we said, all students tip cows. And that's important so we understand who's positive and who's negative. For example, if I were to go write the coordinates um, anywhere in quadrant 1, both cosine and sine are positive, so let's go ahead and write cosine theta, sine theta. Now, however, if I wanted to put a coordinate in quadrant 2, Sine is positive, but cosine is negative. So when you go to write this, you should be writing negative cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. And that's like saying I'm going over a negative x and up a positive y. In this third quadrant, we should be saying that only tangent's positive, so there should be negative cosine theta, comma, negative sine theta. And in quadrant four, um, obviously positive cosine theta, negative sine theta. Okay, and, and again, that really isn't something you should be memorizing. You should just understand that when we go to the right, the x value is positive. When we go to the left, the x value is negative. So we've seen enough questions now that say something similar to the effect of maybe sketch an angle. Of, I don't know, 3 pi over 4. Okay, so what's going through your head when they say that? Okay, so hopefully you're saying the reference angle is blank. Okay, so what is the main angle? As long as this fraction is reduced and 3 fourths is reduced, I should be able to circle this and say, okay, I see a pi over 4, so my reference angle is 45 degrees. Okay, now I see a 3 in front, so I need to multiply that 3 by 45. And a little quick mental math, 3 times 45 gets me a 135. So they're really saying sketch an angle of 135 degrees. So let's take our unit circle, and let's talk ourselves through this. 
Um, I obviously know that this is a 90 degree angle in each of these quadrants, so 135 falls between 90 and 180, and it falls exactly dead in the middle there. Now recall that to make an angle you need two lines. So I need my initial side, you can go ahead and label that, initial, and my terminal side. And then we're going to put an arc in to show we went a positive 3 pi over 4, which again is equivalent to 135 degrees. Is the arc necessary? Yes, you need to show the grader which way your angle went, if it went positive or if it went negative. Now again, we've done this enough times where we should now be able to mark the point on the arc, the subtended arc, and we'll call that maybe, I don't know, B for now, and we should be able to quickly write the coordinates of B. So I'm going to start with my generic x, comma, y, but again in trig we call that cosine sine. Now be smart, I went to the left, so my cosine value is negative, and again that's because I'm in the sine quadrant. So negative cosine theta, positive sine theta. Okay, well now you need an angle for theta. Now clearly the angle is 3 pi over 4, but we want the reference angle, and that's why we want to identify that first. So I'm going to say this is really negative cosine of 45, comma sine of 45. And now there should be two angles that we know, or two exact values that we know. Uh, cosine of 45, if I close my eyes and picture that table, I'm saying that's negative radical 2 over 2, comma sine of 45, radical 2 over 2. And it's that simple. Um, and again, this should be a quick review. Hopefully that wasn't brand new to you. If it is, um, we've got a lot of, lot of good review headed your way. All right, I'm going to give you one to practice with, and again, the more you practice on the, your own, the better you'll be. So the sine of 7 pi over 6, so I want you to graph that angle on the unit circle, and then name the coordinates of the point on the arc. So pause it, good luck. So hopefully you're ready to compare answers, and um, you've identified clearly the pi over 6, which recognize, you recognize as a 30 degrees. Okay, so I know that's really 30 degrees sine 7, so 7 times 3 is 21, which gets me 210 degrees. So I know that falls between a 180 and a 270, and it actually falls closer to the, the 180 than the 270, so I would just make sure I have an initial, my terminal, put my nice arc in. Again, that's my 7 pi over 6, and I'm going to go ahead and label that coordinate with whatever it asked me to in the problem. Again, I'm going to use B. So I'm going to say, okay, what do I know about sine and cosine here? Well, remember, all students tip cows. So I know actually both sine and cosine are negative. So every point x, y, and again in trig, cosine comes first. So negative cosine theta comma sine theta. Okay, now I need to know that theta, and remember, use the reference angle. So negative cosine of 30 comma negative sine of 30, and... Beautiful, cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2, comma the sine of 30, so negative 1 half. And it's that simple. Okay. Um, so two pretty common terms you should be familiar with are reference angles, and again those are degrees of separation with the x-axis, and coterminal angles, angles that lie on the same terminal side. And the trick to getting those was where you just add or subtract 360. Okay, so let's get ourselves a unit circle here, and let's go ahead and sketch an angle of 110 degrees. So I'm saying, okay, that's past 90, it's going to look like this, there's my initial, my terminal, 110 degrees. Now, we should be able to quickly get a reference angle and a coterminal angle. Okay, so what I need you to do is go back to your notes, I did leave something off under reference angle, so... Go back up to where you see reference angle, and let's jot down, it has to be a positive and acute angle. Okay, so positive, obviously you know what that means. Acute means less than 90. So your reference angle has to be a positive acute angle. So, and again, we said it's degrees of separation with the x-axis. So if I'm on this side, I'm closer to this line, which is my 180 mark. So I would say my reference angle is 180 minus 110. I would say it's 70 degrees from the x-axis. 70 degrees from the x-axis. Remind yourself, you can only use the x-axis. Coterminal. The easiest thing to do is just keep adding and subtracting 360 because basically I need to get right back to 110. So if I'm already at 110 and I have 360 degrees, that would get me an angle of 470 degrees. 
So if you were to graph 470, you would go around once to 360, and then you'd go another 110, and it would put you right back where you started. Now, you could subtract 360 as well to get another angle. So if I went a positive 110, that's the same as going a negative 250. And again, how did I get that? Well, I just subtracted 360 from 110. So if I start here and I go backwards, I should also get to that angle of 110. Okay, so another piece of the unit circle we have to be pretty good at is identities. So we can again label any point on this unit circle x comma y. Okay, and again in trig we know that value is actually cosine theta, sine theta, and I'm calling them both positive because I'm in quadrant one where everybody's positive. So I can go ahead and draw out my right triangle in there. Now remember, because it's the unit circle, any radius has a length of 1, which means this side has a length of 1 because it's the unit circle. This would be my x distance, this would be my y distance. So I can go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem, and remember that's just x squared plus y squared equals um, a, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so in this case I've got x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. Okay, but now I'm going to use trig because I know the x value is cosine and the y value is sine. So I'm going to say the cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared equals 1. And I'm going to go ahead and write that in proper notation, and that's just moving the squared down. So I'm going to say that's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And that's where it's come from if it asks you to prove anything. Okay, so I would just draw the triangle out, label it x, y, and 1, and use your Pythagorean theorem. Now, you do have to memorize that, and you have to know how to get the other two. And I think we've talked about that quite a bit on quizzes. We basically just divide every term by cosine squared. Okay. So now anybody divided by itself, of course, is 1 plus sine over cos we know is tangent, and because those are squared, we're going to call it tangent squared. And 1 over cos we know is secant, and it's squared, so secant squared. And there's your second Pythagorean identity. How would I get the other one? Well, instead of dividing by cosine squared, instead I would divide by sine squared. So I'm going to scratch those, and I'm going to put sine squared there. Okay. So cosine over sine is now cotangent squared, we should know, plus sine over sine squared is 1, and 1 over sine squared, well, 1 over sine is cosecant, so that's cosecant squared. And there's really nothing more to it than that. So you should have the first one memorized, and you should be able to, they like to use that word derive, okay, which just means show, manipulate, get, go ahead and derive these other two functions. All right, and lastly, we're going to solve this problem two ways um, when we talk about the unit circle here. So we're given that sine theta equals 7 over 25, and cosine theta is less than 0. Find tangent theta. Okay, so one way, again, is, of course, just to sketch it out. Um, I know sine is positive, so all students tip cows. So sine's positive, so that guy's out and that guy's out. And cosine is less than zero, so cosine is negative, so I know it can't be in the first because everybody's positive. So I know I fall in the second quadrant here. And as I draw my triangle that looks like a bow tie, make sure that theta is at the origin, my right angle is on the axis, the x-axis, I can go ahead and label opposite over hypotenuse. So I can say this is 7, 25, quick Pythagorean theorem gets me a length of 24. Now be smart. If I start at the origin and go out to the left, what do you know about the length of this side? It's actually a negative 24. Okay, so let me talk about why it's negative again. This is the origin. If I plot to the left, I know that distance is negative. Those are negative values. Okay, so now once you have it drawn, it just says find tangent. So now I'm thinking in my head, okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to say that tangent theta equals 7 over negative 24. Okay, so that is one method. The second method that we've got to be familiar with as well is if they tell us to use the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so how are we going to use the Pythagorean identity? Well, we're first going to start by writing it down. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta 
equals 1. And what did they give me? Well, they told me sine theta equals 7 over 25. So cosine squared theta plus, I can plug in 7 over 25 squared equals 1. Why am I keeping it squared, of course? Well, that's the rule. It says sine squared theta. So I can solve cosine squared theta. If I square, I should get, let's see, 7 squared is 49 over 625 equals 1. So I'm going to picture 1 as 625 over 625. And I'm going to subtract 49 over 625. So I'm going to say, okay, cosine squared theta is equal to 576 over 625. Okay, so now to get rid of that squared, I need to take the square root. But here's what you can't forget. You get plus and minus. So you actually get two answers. You get cosine theta equals positive. Let's see, the square root of 576 is 24 over 25. And you get cosine theta equals negative 24 over 25. So you still have to identify that you're in quadrant 2 and you want cosine to be negative, so you have to eliminate this positive one. Okay, so now you know cosine and you need to go get tangent. That's what the question asked you about. So lastly, you'll say that tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine. So I know that my sine was 7 over 25, and my cosine is negative 24 over 25. And to kill a complex fraction, I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by 25. So I'll cancel that and that, and I get my 7 over negative 24. Okay, now, was one method a lot easier than the other? I guess that's a personal preference. Um, I do think that first method was a lot easier, but in case they tell me I have to use the Pythagorean identity, we should be able to do so. Well, I think that does it for our review, and we look forward, like I said, to a lot of great practice. Um, have a great day.